Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be having a controversial hot take of Trunda doesn't need to be nerfed. I want to share with you all before you click off the video, before you dislike it, why I think that's the case, even after doing my video recently, saying how these changes are going to make Hydra much more difficult. Well, it's going to make it much worse for a specific group of players. Without running the risk of re-talking about everything I did before, I want to talk about why these changes are so impactful and bad outside of just missing these points and why I don't think Trenda actually needs to be nerfed. Let's start off with the fact of players pushing this min-max teams, these min-max areas, we want to see big numbers, okay? We want to see the big numbers. Big numbers are awesome. People love big numbers. If you're used to seeing your champions hitting for billions of damage and then they drop down to just a couple million, or if you're used to seeing your team doing 1.26 billion damage on Nightmare Hydra and then it drops down to 300, 400 million, that is going to feel extremely crappy. Even though the numbers have all scaled down and the new personal bests, will you know be relative to the time it's still going to feel pretty horrible especially for a little while and you're going to be missing out some of the hydra clash stuff but the biggest thing is none of this content in hydra same thing with clan boss none of this content is pvp based content until you look at hydra clash which is why i think the scoring needs to be redone and i'm going to show you an example of how that could be done but if you look at hydra alone i don't care if another clan is doing 100 billion points. That is awesome. If you use a broken champion to do 100 billion points, people know they have perspective of, okay, that champion's doing all this damage. It's not like, you know, a crazy level of new theory crafting stuff. It's a champion who we've known is broken. There's nothing crazy about that. Just like in Clan Boss. Well, we have Brogni, who used to do crazy high damage in the teams. He would set teams up to go forever. And he was required to push billions of damage in Clan Boss. I don't even know what the highest score in Clan Boss is, but it's honestly irrelevant. Brogni, nobody cares if you're pushing this kind of damage in Clan Boss, other than it being cool. Like nobody, Nobody's getting upset about this if you're pushing this damage in Clan Boss. They're like, oh, it's sick, dude. You're actually soloing the Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. That is amazing. And the similar thing for Hydra. If you're able to solo Nightmare Hydra, that is cool. That is awesome stuff. You've saved up all your resources to get these champions. This score is not affecting anybody whatsoever. I want to see all my clanmates pushing high numbers, full auto, and enjoying Hydra. That is fine, and we've had Hydra for so long, so all the mechanics, we figured them out, and we're working towards that, and Hydra was never released, as far as I'm aware, to be the expectation of, hey, we're going to have significant changes every so often, where now decapitated heads, which is where most of your damage comes from, are now going to have an HP bar that you can destroy, and the damage is going to be basically completely neutered, down to like 50% of your damage. Very poor situation there. So basically, number one, if Trunda was never involved in Hydra Clash, Hydra stuff, she would be, it wouldn't even matter. Trenda would be perfectly fine. Nobody would care. But when you go looking at the Hydra Clash stuff, the areas that Trenda, that Wixwell, that all these champions who are bugged, OP, whatever it may be, the reason why they become so obnoxious is because you have teams or actually one or two players who can literally solo the entire Hydra Clash. That's never how it should be. Like, even in my clan, honestly, there was a time where we had a few clan members doing, I'd say, 80% of the overall clan damage. Well, why would somebody at the bottom, who's doing 300 million damage, even want to compete when the person at the top is getting, you know, 10 billion damage? It's like, there's no reason to even compete because everybody else in your bracket is doing way more damage than you, and it probably won't even make a difference. So one, it de-incentivizes players lower of actually competing, which is actually taking money from Plarium because they're not getting the, you know, players to spend the money because they're so far away from those Trunda, those Wixwell teams. But if we adjust the Hydra scoring in a way that all the clans will be far more similar in actual points, then this will be a much better system overall. Far more competitive, much more clan-based. You'd want everybody in your clan to compete. Everybody would want, want to bring their numbers up because you're not competing on, hey, who can do the biggest Trinity key? Who can do the biggest Wixwell key? Who can do the biggest key? That's the damage we're going to get. We only need two players doing 200 billion damage in Clash or 200 billion Clash points, and then we're going to win, right? That's how a lot of these clan, uh, Hydra Clashes go outside of the very top. The very top has a lot of players pushing a lot of damage, but once you get like more in the mid-tier clans, I'd say like top 500 and below, you're getting a lot of clans that have players, like just a few of them, who solo the entire Hydra Clash. 
why would you compete if you're doing a measly even a billion clash points what's the point of even competing they have 200 billion but let's take a look at this hydro clash scoring sheet so what i have here over the course of the five clans which is how many is in the hydro clash here we have 150 total players now i've talked about this before i think victor tez was the first person to mention it but this is expanded on a little bit so what i what i've done is the first place person would get 4,000 points. How that would work is at the end of the week, say there was a leaderboard. That'd be pretty sick as well. There's a leaderboard. You see number one down to number 150. If there's only, you know, 130 players because some clans don't have members, well, it'd just be the top 130. Very simple stuff. Very easy to calculate for. Now, if you have 150 players, the person who by the end of the week has done the top damage, they're going to get 4,000 points. And of course, to incentivize players to push for first place, every place below in the top 10 are going to be reduced by 10%. So number one gets 4,000, number two gets 3,600, and it decreases by 10% each time. Once you get out of the top 10, we start decreasing it by 5% of the points, just so you're not having zero points at the bottom. Because remember, we want players who, even if you're not able to do a lot of damage, we want those players to still feel like they're contributing something to the clan. This will incentivize players to, you know, want to get up out of the, the, the bottom 100. If you could see a leaderboard, you could literally see, okay, I've been top 100, for the last few weeks i want to push the top 50. so it's like your own competition in your head you're still contributing pretty massively to the clan and it doesn't matter if somebody does a 200 billion hydro uh clash points with trunda whatever it is because they're still only getting 4,000 points they're not blowing all the competition out of the water this prevent this future proofs hydro clash because now when they release other champions like wixwell in the future who they don't test thoroughly and they come to the game and end up breaking everything well, now all of a sudden, it's not a big deal. You have broken mechanics in the game. It's okay for Hydra Clash. People can come over to the RSL Leaderboards Discord, post their crazy, insane damage, get on the board over here, and it's awesome stuff. This is what's keeping a lot of the players intrigued in the game, wanting to, you know, theorycraft and push up these high numbers. They're doing it for Clan Boss. We're doing speed runs in other dungeons. So, yeah, the, the 200 billion... Trunda team isn't going to be as impressive like solo and clash as before but now you're not going to have you know 149 other players or i guess 120 other players getting ticked off because that one player soloed the entire hydra clash so what happened here is i basically randomized all the numbers and you can see which clan got which places looks like clan number four got some players in the 25 to 28 and then uh maybe clan let's see Clan 1 was kind of struggling, but they still came out pretty good. We have a lot of players down low, but we also had some players, you know, up at here at the top, 1 and 5. Now, who knows what the actual breakdown of this would be? Maybe you'd want to have the top, uh, top damage be like 10,000 points and then a 10% drop from there. But essentially, this would be a system that, one, say there's a leaderboard added as well. You could see, okay, this player did 200 million damage. Just throwing a random number out there 200 million damage this is the team they used you can already see all the teams players used but now you could see this would be a course across all three of your keys so instead of it being shown here or it could be shown here and in the leaderboard section but then you have a leaderboard section all right so din got 200 million 200 billion points so now he's number one in the leaderboard instead of getting 50 billion clash points now he's going to be getting this instead and it could still be calculated based off of your Hydra Clash score, of course. You could still use the multipliers, the times for multiplier, everything will be fine. You'll still get your chest down here. Everything will be good. And if Plarium wanted to make it more difficult, they could go about different things in the future. Instead of breaking Hydra to the point where a lot of teams are taking a significant hit. And most players, as far as I'm aware, at least I was never in the loop that Hydra is going to have this significant of changes where champions that you've invested thousands of energy books, gems, everything into are now significantly worse than they were just the day before the patch actually goes live. But I believe, honestly, this type of system would be so good because nobody's getting blown out of the water. You have 30 members. If everybody's competing, everybody's getting points, even down here at the very bottom, which is why the points drop off staggers. So 1 to 10 by 10%, 11 to 50 by 5% each drop, 50 to 100 is about 2% each time, and then 100 to 150 drops by 1%. So if you're outside the top 100, you're not getting a significant, you know, taxing to your points. You're not going to be making zero points. You're not making very much. 
at 150, but you're still getting 44 points. If you have a few members down here at the bottom picking up these 50 points or whatever, you may be able to slot into the top three, possibly, but maybe not. Of course, you still have one, two, three, four, five clans, so the top three get the rewards and the bottom two don't. So clan five and clan three missed out. Clan five was very close to clan one, but unfortunately came up a little bit short. But it's not like, okay, well, clan one already has 100 billion clash points. There's no reason to even compete. Might as well just try to fight for second or third or just sit out completely, which now everybody, even if it's a completely dead key, they have a reason to compete. And if you're somebody who wants to push harder, and of course, if Plaria wants to inflate these numbers, this could be, instead of 4,000, it could be 400,000 if you want really big numbers. It's kind of irrelevant, though, as far as how many zeros are after that number. It's just the distribution of the points and how everybody in the clan is going to be earning the points. Now, I could be missing something on this. This could be a horrible system. But for my idea, it looks pretty good, honestly. It looks like a solid system. Looks like something fair. Looks like a system where everybody still gets to use their broken and busted teams in PvP, sorry, PvE content. And what I'm saying is this is not PvP. If there are champions broken in PvP, that directs, directly hurts other players. Like, if I'm using, well, Taras Marichka, for example, for a long time, broken. They're still broken. Well, not as much as before because we have mythical champions to counter them and things like that. But they're still used all the time. This broken stuff in PvP, Polymorph being one of them, needs to be fixed because that is directly hurting player-on-player -player experiences. Whereas Hydra, with Clash taken out of the picture, Hydra doesn't bother player-on-player -player experience. If anything, it's, you know, it brings people closer together and makes the game more enjoyable because you can theorycraft higher and higher teams and get cool stuff going. Hydra's cool for that, for that reason. When you bring in Clash, this is where it starts becoming toxic People get angry, upset, and just want to quit the game. If they had this other scoring, I don't think players would want to quit the game because they know, hey, I'm always going to be placing on this board, even if I get 150. Now it's a competition with myself. It's a clan competition versus the other clans, and it's something I want to strive to do better in. But as, a, as an officer of my clan, used to be leader, I passed that on though, but as an officer, if somebody does zero dam or one damage, they get 50 points, sweet. But now, if somebody does 200 million, they get, what, um, 800 million clash points? Well, that's not really that big of a deal because we have some players getting way more points than that. It's crazy. Like, okay, we got 7.13 billion clash points, okay? Your 800 million is cool, but 7 billion? That's a big number. They're just really not that comparable. So, guys, I guess I'll get off my soapbox here. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Honestly, try to push this to Polarium. If they see this and hear this, it would take a while, I'm sure, for the, I have no clue what the uh, the game dev side of this would actually look like or how it would actually work. So, of course, it would take some time for it to actually get implemented. Do I really think this is going to get implemented? No. But do I think this would be a huge, huge quality of life for Hydra? Without a doubt. It'll prevent so many future issues from Hydra that it really seems like an obvious solution because the current situation is not a solution. The current situation is just going to have holes poked in it in the future. We're going to have champions released who are bugged in a way that they didn't expect. Wixwell being a perfect example, we have the taunt, which was a buff that was working as intended before, and now all of a sudden it's not working as intended. It's extremely frustrating that the champion was released, Shayek, built around taunt, and now all of a sudden taunt is useless in Hydra. Players went for that fusion tried to get it they got it and now it's basically useless so changes like this to clash will keep players interested keep players intrigued make you still want to push hydra make you know that hey the champions and the teams you invested in they're not going to be as impactful as before you're not going to be able to solo 149 other players but you're still going to be able to compete for the top three places you're still going to be able to compete for the top 10 whatever the breakdown is heck they could even have badges as well. There's so much potential for this, honestly. They have badges now. You could get badges for having the top placing in Hydra Clash, the number one spot. You could have a pretty sick badge. I mean, they literally have badges very close to that already. Um, I need to figure out how to get that Serpent's badge because it's probably going to be much more difficult very soon. What is it? Let me check out what this is real quick. Where's that Serpent badge? Pest Control, Serpent's... Oh, I already got it. 
more than 36 million damage to Hydra using one key nightmare. All right. But guys, this is just my opinions, my thoughts. Um, I do think it'd be pretty sweet, though, honestly. I mean, imagine if you... Getting top one, getting number one, top three even, in Hydra Clash is far more doable than these other badges like the, uh, the Platinum Arena one, which is crazy. Even top ten. Who knows? But that's something that would encourage players to still want to build Trenda teams. But now they're just going to be crushed. Like, they're going to be a fraction of the damage before. And I have no doubt things are going to be broken again. Things are going to come up that Plarium didn't expect, and it's just going to break it again. So these are just my opinions. Obviously, it's kind of too late to actually change Trenda because the changes that are happening to her affect her and Hydra quite a bit anyways. So when it actually comes to Hydra, maybe we get some changes. I'd honestly love to see something like that. If Plarium did it, it'd make Hydra more enjoyable for me. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know. Is there something that's like glaringly obvious and just bad about this? Maybe there is. Maybe there's a situation where this just doesn't work and it's actually horrible. But from the numbers here, everything looks far better. I would much rather be beaten by 10,000 points than 100 billion points. Clan 3 was really struggling, though. They were really struggling. And I mean, I think they even had a few players in the top, right? Yeah, they had 36, 29, 16, 40. Yeah, they had quite a few players up there. But then they also had quite a few players. Actually, no. Why did they get so bad score, I wonder? Either way, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> they did what they did. And that's the score. So, 520. I mean, I guess everybody else just did better. But Clan 3 was sure struggling. Definitely. But all right, guys. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate you all. Let me know what you think about this down below in the comment section. I think this is pretty cool. Uh, but catch you all later on.